Um, Syria. Mitch McConnell voted against the war in Syria, which I don't know why that's all. Grimes blasted Mc McConnell for staying silent on the position, and then she wanted to see an exit strategy, so she was um, anti-Syria intervention. Mitch McConnell voted against it, but that's interesting. He votes against the Syria conflict, but he was for Iraq, and he's for all these other fucking conflicts. Mitch McConnell votes against renewing the Violence Against Women Act and the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, so he's not for equal pay between women. He's pro-violence, I guess, against women, you know, that's why he would vote against the Violence Against Women Act, that's pretty, it's a pretty uh, damning, um, uh, you know, allegation, uh, you're, you're against violence against women, is that what that act means? Allison is pro-choice down the line, she's the youngest female secretary of state in America, and, um, and more on her. I will single out is Tom Rectenwong, he represented you here and in Columbus, once again, he reached out and grabbed everyone with his talk. A personal and profound thanks, Tom. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The next thing that I received is the one I'm most proud of because it came from my colleagues, my fellow rank and file workers. It says on this plaque, presented to Tom Rechtenwald in appreciation for your dedication and extraordinary effort to keep NOSL open. Thank you from your friends at NOSL, 7 July, 1993. That one I'm proud of because it's from my people. Very proud of that one. Now during this same period, I was selected to participate in this year-long uh, leadership development program. And as part of that program, I got to spend two months, two months in Washington working with the Federal Times newspaper. It's a national newspaper that, that uh, writes about issues important to federal employees. Here's an example of one of the articles that I had published in there. You might not recognize the picture because I had hair then, but here's a two-column story that I wrote titled Fear and Rumor, Life Under the Shutdown Acts. I was very proud to have that done. Many, many articles I wrote. So in conclusion, for a different video, um, Kentucky's got a ton of liberal vigilante laws, okay? So there's actually, it's all, uh, laws are on the books that if you witness a felony and you don't do shit about it, you're culpable for it. You got If you could try to arrest a person, you have to try to arrest a person if you see a felony committed in your presence, right? All right. So, Margaret Garner also, to conclude this, this is a 22-year-old slave mother from Boone County who had a, a butcher knife to her 2-year-old child in Cincinnati um, right before, you know, she didn't want to get him to be sent back to slavery. So, instead of having her kid be sent back to slavery, she killed her own kid. And she killed a two-year-old child named Mary. She was the light-skinned master Archibald fucking Gaines. Archibald K. Gaines. Illegitimate child. Eventually, he, she was acquitted of murder in Cincinnati. She was sent back into slavery in the South. She moved three different times. Wound up dying in the Mississippi plantation of typhoid two years later after she had murdered her kid in the late 1850s uh, before shots were ever fired at Fort Sumter. So... That's what happened to Margaret Garner. That's what she was acquitted of her murder trial. Um, but then she was, had to force, you know, her entire rest of her life was in slavery. And then she eventually dies of typhoid. So Allison Lundergan Grimes. Well, all right, I'm going to go through Allison Lundergan Grimes' um, her own material on her own webpage. And then I'm going to I'm going to analyze it. I'm going to compare sort of Greg Lichty's and hers. And then um, sort of my own take on the thing. And so... So let's see who Allison Lundergan Grimes actually is, okay? So Allison Lundergan Grimes, um, we're see that, we see that she's pro-choice uh, all the way down the line. She loves abortion, she's very, very, very pro-abortion, um, which is a, uh, that's like Ashley Judd, that's a good thing. Um, it's, it, we don't want more abortions, uh, you know, we want less pregnancies to happen, but if I was about to drop a baby and I was about to drop a embryo, which one would you catch? you would catch the baby. So, um, when, uh, okay, Allison Lundergan Grimes, she's trying to play politics, right? So she keeps on criticizing Obamacare, saying that she was against the mandates, the individual mandate, and she wanted some, uh, the grandfather clause, which is that's great grandfather clause. Where does that come from? Straight from the South. Uh, 
So she she feels the need that she has to criticize Obamacare, even though it's been a great success. Here we have 640,000 uh, Kentuckians with no health insurance, and um, and and there's about 260,000 that have signed up for the damn thing. So it's been a, a tremendous success here. But they don't want to admit to it. And also, it kind of brings up about universal health care. Where's her position on universal health care? Does she believe in a government health care? Or are we forced to buy from private companies? Um, so, you know, do we, it should be more like TenCare, Ten, Tennessee's universal health care outfit, TenCare. Right, uh, Allison wants the mandate to be exempted for small businesses, just like Obama did for the large corporations. So there's several like major, you know, issues that she has with the thing. But I think I don't know. I think she believes in it, but she has to criticize it in order to keep up with Mitch, which she shouldn't do. She should just be her own person, fighting for her own issues, and she should dictate the rules to this campaign. I think she has enough. Um, uh, license to do this. She's one of five daughter, daughters. She's a devout Catholic, so that's kind of good, you know, being in a day and age where Catholics are allowed to run for office. It's not a big deal that she's a Catholic. Um, JFK was a huge deal. She was He was the first Catholic to run in and win uh, the presidency, so we're very much a Protestant nation. Um... Which, I don't know if that's good or bad. There's good and bad on both both ends of that. Because the Catholics and Protestants have been battling it out between each other, um, they kind of poke holes in each other, other's arguments. So, 600,000 uninsured Kentuckians will get insurance. Um, Lichty, okay, so Lichty's pissed off. So he, was, he says, you don't change the broken organization by replacing... Top management. You change a broken organization by hiring new management dedicated in heart and soul to changing it. It's the same for the Senate. To change the culture, you need to start with campaign finance and election reform. You are the Secretary of State, Allison Lundgren Grimes. Elections are your business. This should be your issue. Let's hear much more. Much, much more. So, yeah, whatever. Okay, so advocate for women and their families. Okay, so let's see. She's pro-choice. She has a little bit of issue for with Obamacare. But she's overall for the plan. She entered public services. She's not in favor of repeal. So she entered the public service to give voice to the voices. Experience she gained as an attorney for victims of domestic violence. As Secretary of State, Allison Champion, the first ever address a confidentiality program for victims of domestic violence to ensure their safety and security are not compromised when they exercise their right to vote. So if you're a victim of domestic violence, you're allowed to go vote. Allison, the Secretary of State, Allison Lundergan Grimes also ushered in new laws that maintain the integrity of the democratic process and protect the voting rights of our men and women in uniform and absentee voters. She is committed to guaranteeing that every eligible Kentuckian has access to the ballot box. Allison's vision, creating good paying jobs, fight to close the gender wage gap and, for, and raise the minimum wage to ensure middle class security for women and their families. Making child care more affordable. Affordable child care is out of reach for many Kentuckians. Over 140,000 working Kentucky mothers have a child under six, positioning them as increasingly likely to need child care services. Allison strongly believes that we must begin to address this problem, provide additional tax breaks to Kentucky businesses that create on-site on -site child care centers or help their employees find child care services. We also must develop federal and state partnership to improve access to quality child care for rural areas while working parents often face unique challenges. Meanwhile, Mitch McConnell has actually repeated he yeah, repeatedly voted to slash funding for child care services in Kentucky. Under a proposal supported by Mitch McConnell, approximately 1,700 fewer Kentucky children would have child care through the Child Care and Development Block Grant. So he's already fucking cutting, you know, child services from 1,700 uh, Kentucky kids. Mitch McConnell ain't no friend to the working class, man. We all know this. We're going to expand access to quality education. This is what Allison wants. We'll work with families. Education is the passport out of poverty, and every child has a right to a quality education. A good education is an 
economic necessity and should not be a luxury. Education is the gateway to good paying jobs, economic growth, and a strong middle class. Mitch McConnell negotiated a Washington budget deal that caused 1,100 Kentucky children to lose access to early childhood education and cut an estimated 31 Point eight million from Kentucky schools. He also opposed legislation to hire and preserve jobs for teachers and blocked legislation to preserve low interest rates for students. So, yeah, that's bad too, right? Protecting victims of domestic violence according to Kentucky Cabinet for Health and Family Services. A woman is assaulted every 15 seconds and one in six women in the U.S. will become victims of domestic violence over the course of her lifetime. A troubling statistic that must be addressed. Mitch McConnell has repeatedly opposed the Violence Against Women Act, even blocked an effort to vote on the bill to protect women, keeping promises to Kentucky sen seniors. Estimated 600,000 Kentuckians rely on Social Security and nearly 800,000 Kentuckians depend on Medicare. Allison will protect and strengthen Social Security and Medicare as Kentucky's next U.S. Senator. Women rely more heavily on income from Social Security than men do and the majority of Medicare recipients are women. Women have more health care needs, live with chronic conditions, and have higher life expectancies than men. Therefore, women are especially reliant on the health care services provided by Medicare. Um, the men, too. The men too. Don't forget about the men, Allison. The promise of a secure retirement is one we must keep for our nation's seniors and make sure these programs are still intact for our children and grandchildren. Allison Lundergan Grimes is focused on spending smarter, reducing waste in the Medicare system, and improving coordination of care. Instead of strengthening and preserving these critical programs, Mitch McConnell wants to privatize Social Security and end Medicare as we know it, increasing seniors' out-of-pocket costs by nearly $6,000. Achieving pay equity, women are half the labor force in the country. It still makes 77 cents for every dollar, 23 cents, 23% uh, less than their male counterparts. In Kentucky, women lose nearly $5 billion in wages each year. Statistic, that's staggering and unacceptable. With that money, a working woman in Kentucky could purchase 78 more weeks of groceries, pay 14 more months of rent, make 8 more months of mortgages and utility payments, or buy... 2777 additional gallons of gasoline. In contrast, Mitch McConnell has called equal pay for equal work just another special interest vote and voted against the Lilly Ledbetter Pay Fair Pay Act and the Paycheck Fairness Act not once but twice. Increasing minimum wage in order to grow our minimum class or middle class. Again, we're talking about middle class. We don't give a shit about the poor, we must raise the minimum wage to help hard working Americans achieve a basic standard of living. So actually that would help sort of not it would eliminate the poor, eliminate the idea of the poor. It's a good the heart of what well, I don't know if it'll work or not, but the heart of raising the minimum wage is right. So an overwhelming majority, two-thirds of minimum wage workers in the United States are women. Consider a single working mother of two who makes the current minimum wage, who just brings home fourteen thousand five hundred dollars annual nearly four thousand below the poverty line rather than forcing our neighbors to choose between putting food on the table getting to work and paying the rent all americans deserve a, a living wage that is consistent with our values raising the minimum wage should increase uh, would increase incomes for more than 30 million workers in the United States, and it's an important step to ensure workers see the benefit of a growing economy. Earlier this year, the Kentucky Center for Economic Policy poured into a report detailing the impact a minimum wage increase of $10.10 .10 an hour would have in Kentucky. According to the report, during, doing so would lift the wages over over one in four Kentucky workers. So one in four Kentucky workers would get a, a raise. Right now they're stuck in some seven dollar, eight dollar job, fucking Burger King, some motherfucking Walmart, some fucking piece of shit corporation doesn't give a shit about their workers and they're paying them as much, you know, as less as possible, as least as possible. And so they're getting away with just seven dollars, and you can't raise a family on seven dollars if the job does not allow you to uh, sustain a living, that job should be criminal. That sh job should be abolished. Um, if it is re um, um, relies on slave wage, um, if it relies on slave wages, then that job should be abolished. So, earlier this year, they, okay, so they says that they would lift the wages of over one in four Kentucky workers, increase the annual earnings for the nearly 30% of Kentuckians who make minimum wage or just above 
by 2,369 on average dollars and $863 million in total. Grow Kentucky's GDP by $546 million by 2015 and create 2,200 jobs. Ms. McConnell has voted against raising the minimum wage at least 16 times, voting in favor of raising his own government salary every time. Right? Give me all the fucking money. He's gone from like $4 million to $27 million in just 10 years. So, Mitch McConnell is banking. He's getting some good fucking money. He's going to get fucking paid before he, get, he, he bows out, right? And, um, so, Mitch McConnell has voted against the minimum wage. Allison Lundergan Grimes, Kentucky's first woman senator, hopefully, will continue being a staunch advocate for women and their families. She will seek common gr uh, ground and work across the aisle for solutions that put Kentucky and our country right in, uh, back in the, on the right track.